What up you guys, Mr. Money1235 here again with a review of the new Muse album, The Second Law. Now Muse is one of those bands that I would define as being very cool. That word just seems to round out what I think about the band. I just think they're really cool. They have a really awesome like space rock type sound to them. My current favorite albums by the band are Black Holes and Revelations and Origin of Symmetry. Both of them I find to be really, really good. Muse have not made an album yet where I've been totally like, every single song on this album is great. They have yet to do that for me, but these two come pretty damn close to doing that. And luckily, I found a third. Now before this album came out, everybody thought that it was going to be a little bit more dubstep influence, and there's a hint of it here and there, but really the majority of this album is the same sound that you've heard from Muse before, with a few tiny little sprinkles of different diversity in there. Not as much diversity as I wanted, but it's still really good. The album opens with a track called Supremacy, and to me, it sounds like this song should be in, like, an action movie or a spy movie or something. The way that the strings and the orchestra sounding effects over top of it, it just sounds really epic. And that is one of the highest falsettos that Matt has ever had on a song, I think. Yes, the next song, Madness was the lead single, and when this song first came out, I had a really hard time deciding whether I liked this song or didn't like this song. For the most part, I really liked it, and nowadays, I love this song. I think it was a great first single. Unless you count Survival as the first single, because that came out when the 2012 Olympics were going on. That was way before Madness. I don't know. Uh, whatever. The point is, it's a good song. The song Panic Station is one that Muse have never done before and is probably my favorite song on the album. This song really has a whole lot of influences of classic rock, almost like sticks to me. I hear sticks when I hear this song. I don't know how to explain it or why, but it has a classic rock feel to it. And it sounds like something that Muse have never been done before. There's a really cool orchestra part later on in the song where the horns come in. The melody of this song is great. The chorus is great. The way the bass sounds in this song is wonderful. The bassist always has great lines in Muse. I mean, the bass lines in Muse are just infamous. Hysteria, I'm looking at you. Then of course we have Prelude and Survival. And in my original review of Survival, I said that I wasn't really a huge fan of this song. But in the context of listening to it in this album, it somehow made it so much better to me being surrounded by all these other songs. While it's still not my favorite on the album, the guitar work in this song is pretty epic and I just find myself enjoying it a little bit more as I'm listening to the album. It just fits really well. So Survival has actually went up my list as one that I actually like now. The next song, Follow Me, is where that dubstep influence comes in and it's probably my second favorite song on the album. There's a really cool dubstep beat on this song, and Matt sings over the top of that, and it just sounds so epic, and it sounds really cool, and it makes for an awesome dubstep song, in my opinion. The next song, Animals, reminds me of some of Muse's earlier opening tracks, like Born or Bliss, Off of Origin of Symmetry, and it has a really cool keyboard part that goes throughout the whole song, and then the awesome drums, and I love the lyrics on this song as well. Animals is a wonderful song. It's one of those... It's one of those deep cuts in a Muse album that doesn't get a whole lot of recognition, but is a really good song among fans. To me, anyway. I, I love this song. I think it's great. This is the point when the album starts slowing down for me and kind of losing pace. The song Explorers is very similar to that of Invincible that was off of Black Holes and Revelations. But after I started listening to a little bit more, I started hearing things that separated the two songs. When I first heard it, all I could hear was the melody to Invincible. But as I listen to it now, I'm hearing more things that kind of differentiate the two tracks. And I'm, it's growing on me, honestly. It was my least favorite song on this album, but now it's really growing on me. And uh, I'm actually enjoying it now. I actually like to sing along to it and stuff, so it's pretty good, too. The track... Big Freeze is alright. Um, I'm not really hot on this song, honestly. Uh, I don't know why. I mean, like, it. I can listen to it. I can listen to it. It just doesn't do anything for me. The track Save Me has the bassist on vocals. It sounds weird to say. <laughs> it really gives a new sound to Muse 
with him singing. I'm I'm not okay. I'm not exactly sure if that's the bass of singing. I'm pretty sure that it is. I can't wait for the album to come out so that I can read the liner notes just to make sure. But I'm pretty sure it's the bassist on this song singing. And it's a really slow song from Muse, but it's one that has a really awesome vocal melody. I just love how the vocals sound over top of the darkness of the track. I love how the vocals sound on top of everything. It it works really well, and even though it's a really long song, it's really enjoyable to listen to, even if there's a slight bit of repetitiveness in it. The next song, Liquid State, still has the bassist on vocals, and it's a song that doesn't sound like should be Muse. And I mean, that's a good thing, because I like when bands come out of the box, it's just not a sound that I'm crazy about. This honestly feels like a little bit of a filler track to me, honestly. Uh, I'm not crazy about this song either, but I like it alright. And then The Second Law, Unsustainable, and then Isolated System are the two closing tracks on this album. Unsustainable being the track that everybody heard when this first came out in the trailer. The dubstep song that made everybody think The Muse was doing a dubstep album. It's still one of the best songs on this thing. I love this song. It sounds sweet. Same thing with the song Isolated System. Some people might think it's a little bit too repetitive, but I love the dark mysteriousness of it, and I think it closes out the album really well. So once again, Muse have impressed me with this one. I, I like it a whole lot. It still goes down that road of being a Muse album that I can't say is absolutely perfect, but no Muse album has done that for me yet, honestly. But it does fall in the category of Black Holes of Revelations and Origins of Symmetry, as in, I like all of the songs on it. There's not a single song that I feel like I have to skip over. There's just a few that I like more than others. And that's a good thing. So for the second law, I'm going to be giving this a 7 out of 10. I'm going to be owning it on the day of release. I guarantee you, if you come down here... Here's a slot for my Muse albums. I've already made a hole for uh, the second law right here. Yep. I've already made a hole for it, so I guarantee you, I'm going to have this on release day. I like it a whole lot. It's one of my favorite Muse albums now. Probably my second favorite. In order of Black Holes and Revelations, The Second Law, and Origin of Symmetry. That's my trio of Muse albums that I love. So, uh, yeah. I'll see you guys again tomorrow, probably. <laughs> Mr. Money 1235 out.